Hello everyone, I'm the House of Night Angel, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, one second. This is the first time I've ever had a script, so, uh, welcome to the first scripted or semi-scripted video of mine. Since, well, I basically revived the channel. Today, I'm going to talk about how I'd reveal the identities of Chat Noir and Ladybug. Sorry if I sound weird when I'm reciting off of a, uh, script. It's just how I sound when I read off something. So I'll talk about if I had full creative control over the show for an episode or two, and if I didn't and had a few, a few basic rules to follow, which I will talk about after going off about what I'd want to do with their identities being real. So picture this. Another time travel episode. Because I am an old Sailor Moon fan with a soft, with a soft spot for time travel reveals, i.e. learning Chibiusa is Mamoru and Usagi's child. I like the idea of Marinette and Adrian figuring out at the same time and being equally baffled and embarrassed. Because I'm evil. Uh, so there's a new time villain, and I might do a little like mini sketch of them in the speed draw. But I'm not exactly sure what they look like or how exactly their powers will work. But they show up and Bunnik shows up fighting them. Blasting through walls and time. And our versions of Ladybug and Shat show up to help. Villain smirks, sees an opportunity to throw Bunnik off guard, attacks her younger leader's counterparts, sending them to her future, and damaging the Bunny Miraculous in the process. Luckily, future LB shows up with future Shat, with cool new hero outfits, and finish up the LB. And go on a quick rant about how their future outfits will look before giving back to the story ideas. Ladybug, as you can slash will see, is mostly the same. But only the bodice slash leotard of her outfit has the ladybug spots, her limbs are black. She has, instead of having the ribbons on pigtails, her hair is either in a ponytail or mostly down, with a ribbon that look like antennae. Her mask, instead of being a standard mask, now looks more like a wing goggle, similar to what I did in my, ver my version of if I had redesigned the starting outfits and my Be Miraculous Holders goggles. With a little ladybug on the bridge of her nose. Uh, Shat has an undercut with a shaved paw design because I think undercuts on innocent boys are cute. His outfit looks actually more casual, but still looks pretty uh, badass, if I say so in my mind. Uh, so it looks like a leather jacket with a cloth hood that have cat ears on it. Think like Carapace's hood. Um, the cat ears are made, still made out of the ears. The zipper is his bell still. And it looks like there's a series of belts on his bottom half with, with what look like leather pants. But it's just one really long belt that ends up being his tail. Uh, and he has steel toed boots that kind of that have the toe bean pattern on the bottom because toe beans. His tail is the belt, but because it's connected to the longer series of look, belt looking things, it's much longer when he undoes it. He, he, the hoodie has what looks like cloth fingerless gloves attached with the toe bean, the like main toe, the paw bean on it, but under that there's like, it looks like leather gloves with the toe beans and claws that he can retract and track? Is that the word you use when a cat doesn't have their claws retracted? <laughs> Going on! <laughs> um... His staff, instead of being linked to his back, is on like a clip to his belt or his 
up like a sleeve or something that he can just easily get to instead of reaching behind him, which is kind of a dead giveaway. Instead of a mask, he has more like emo kid eye makeup that kind of has like cat motifs in it. When future ladybug uses her mir miraculous ladybug to heal everything, for plot reasons, Bunnix's miraculous does not get fixed, nor do our ladybug and cat noir end up back in their time. Alex starts panicking, and future LB is just like, it's fine. It's, it was bound to happen. It's a it's a paradoxal loop. You're cool. You didn't do anything wrong. It was going to happen no matter what. And she admits she'll need time to fix the bunny miraculous, but it's going to take longer than the transformation lasts for. Meanwhile, Future Shadow is just sitting there with a Cheshire cat grin, knowing how embarrassed their past selves are going to be. So, the future duo take our duo to an alley to detransform, because while they know each other's identities, the public doesn't know their identity, and while Bunnix knows their identities, again, the public doesn't know, and they'd like to keep it that way. So, future LB tells our version of the duo to drop the transformation, because they can't can't spend the time it would take her to fix the miraculous to be in here for him. It just would be uncomfortable. Of course, RLB would protest because uh, identity reveals and they're not supposed to know. And just to prove a point, future LB and future Shat detransform. And we see an older Adrian and Marinette standing before them. Mel is confident, proud, and like most of her insecurities that she had at the age we know our Marinette in are gone. I imagine this is quite a bit in the future. Like they're young adults, but they're in that more like mid 20 range of young adults, if that makes any sense. Where like their lives aren't fully put together because. No one's life is put together at this point. But the reasons they were... I don't know how to put this because this is kind of a tangent that I didn't write a script for. The reasons they were self-conscious in the past are no longer an issue. Like, Marinette's confident about how her designs look, she's confident with herself, so she still has some issues when it comes to being leader of Paris's best superhero team, and she yet struggles with being the guardian, but when it comes to her civilian life, she's got it mostly figured out, comparative to her past self. Um, Adrian would be more goofy, more like Shat personality-wise, because he doesn't have to live under the thumb of his father as an adult. He can do whatever he wants within reason, and friend who he wants, and everything. Sorry if you could hear me cracking my uh, fingers. Okay. Now I will go off of what I've actually written down for their looks as adults. I don't know why I forgot the word for adult for a second, but uh, welcome to my brain. So I'll start with Marinette like I did with Ladybug and Cat Noir. Marinette's ha hair is down, a la Chat Blanc. That has the ribbon headband, except it's tied more into like a simple bow or a simple knot that just hangs to the side instead of looking like antennae. Uh, she's wearing a 
black jacket with pink flower accents, similar to what she wears in the show. But along with the accents, there is a green lined paw print with a ladybug pattern in it. And that's kind of become her like signature in her designs is a little Shot Noir and Ladybug pattern. And she's wearing gray pants with pink sneakers. Pretty simple outfit, but suits her. Meanwhile, Adrian is wearing this cloth like short sleeve hoodie jacket with a long sleeve shirt that covers his palms. Kind of like those like jackets you see where it's basically a jacket connected to fingerless gloves except it's an undershirt that's that. And then a uh, and it's a white undershirt that's that. And his short sleeve jacket has little cat ears on them with green insides because he thinks he's clever and knows that as long as he doesn't do eye makeup or a mask that looks like Chat Noir, nobody's gonna recognize him. So he's kind of having fun trolling the entire public. Uh. He has the same little, like, ladybug paw design that's on Marinette's jacket on his palm. Like, on his, the palms of his shirt. And he's wearing ripped jeans. So basically this is him trying to go through a rebellious stage now that he has more freedom. And he's dressing the part. Anyways, future Adrian's just like, surprise! While future Marinette explains the situation. She has to gather materials to fix the bunny miraculous. She knows how to get them, but it will take time and she needs Adrian to get some of them for her because they're harder to find pieces. They were always supposed to find out this way. It's no big deal. And everything's going to be fine. They won't have to forget this time. Which confuses both Marinette and Cat Noir because I'm pretty sure uh, she doesn't remember the whole Cat Blanc situation. But I digress. She pulls out traits for Tiki and Plag. We're entirely unfazed. Well, Plag's probably messing with their past selves about it. Mostly past Adrian. And then pulls out a notebook and writes down a list for our future Adrian to get items. Our Ladybug and Chats transformations time out. And they're both left with, yep, uh, Marinette's been rejecting the advances of Adrian all along, and holy shit, Adrian's quote-unquote everyday ladybug is also his actual ladybug. They triple turn the blush messes, meanwhile Adrian's future self is just laughing at them. Because he's kind of developed a flag sense of humor and finds this entire situation hilarious. They also notice that, like, the future Adrian and Marinette are calling each other nicknames, like, similar to how they call each other nicknames as heroes, but it's a lot more flirty. Like, future Adrian's calling future Marinette love bug, my princess, all that jazz, and future Marinette's just like, okay, Katie, love you too. <laughs> They basically have very much the same dynamic as they do as Ladybug and Chat Noir, but they're a thing. And when yeah. one of our versions of the two uh, question them, uh, yeah. future Adrian gets to boast about how, yep, he is dating his lady, and goes off about how awesome she is. And because I find it funny, Marinette. Almost famous. This would cue into like antics. I'd want this to be like a series of episodes, but like if I had to just do it as a montage, it'd be fine. I just wouldn't prefer it. 
making it takes with them have, having to uh, third and fourth reel on the future selves of the trolls, which are basically dates in hero costume. This entire time, the other miraculous holders that have been revealed, like uh, Luca, Kagami, uh, Nino, they're having to house the past versions of their leaders because it's easier to say to all their different parents, like, hey, this is a friend's brother and sister. They're in a spot of trouble. They're spending the night. Then it is for Marinette to convince her parents to let a girl that looks very similar to her and very similar to her boyfriend stay at her house for a week. And I'm not sure about Adrian's living situation because he could 100% own an apartment and Adrian, our Adrian just ends up staying with him the entire time. Uh, but anyways, the alternative goal of the other Miraculous holders on the team is to completely and utterly tease and embarrass the hell out of the younger versions of their leaders. Because their Adrian has no shame in <laughs> be like, Yeah, I'm doing your beautiful, smart, fearless, wonderful, amazing, can you, what are we talking about? <laughs> Like, completely go off. And because their Adrian is so, like, open with affection, and no matter who's watching, by the way, in public and stuff, their Marinette is completely amused to the teasing by now because nothing they can ever say or do will be more embarrassing than what her boyfriend pulls. At the end of the episode slash episodes, they return to their original time as LB and Chat. Have to deal with their feelings not only for each other, but like for Luca and Megami as well. Because they care about our friends. Also, I'm not entirely sure if at the end of the last season that came came out when on Netflix for English speakers, uh if they're meant to be dating them. Or if it was just a implied like they're going to start going after Luca and Megami. That's a gray area. But also they care about the friends. And Marinette doesn't want to seem like she's stealing her friend's crush away from her. More or less, depending on if they're dating or not, there's going to be drama. Which, I'm down with. I'm down with a little, like, sitcom-ish drama in my shows. I have a very healthy relationship with my significant other. And it's entertaining to watch fictional characters have, like, semi-unstable relationships before finally getting stable. Hope you didn't hear my no snort right there, because that'd be embarrassing. And I mentioned it, so now you're gonna go back and listen to it if you couldn't hear it before. Uh, now let's talk about if I couldn't have that full creative control, make them look how I wanted, give them the personalities I wanted, yada 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 yada. Uh, it'd probably be a powerful thing. I'm thinking everybody's favorite brunette hate, Lila, because I lo- I'd love nothing more than to see the look on her face that she's the reason that Adrian and Marinette get together. She has illusion of powers again because I'm an original and I'm, I wrote the script at 5am because I couldn't fall asleep and I knew it wouldn't get any better with sleep. Now it's almost 7pm than what I would consider the next day. It's just later that same day. Reading and like, yeah, this script wasn't going to get any better. Anyways creates an illusion of Chat Noir in front of Lady Bug's class. Adrian can't transform because plot reasons. Because isn't that the reason things don't go down in shows? Like, you're like, well, can you have just, uh, it's for plot reasons, don't question me. I get to blame it on it being 5am. Uh, so, 
Lila in whatever BS acumatized form she's in this time. It's telling Ladybug she's useless without her precious kitty to help. And she'll go easy on, on her pet if Ladybug reveals her identity. And if she doesn't, well... The implication is that she would chat because I'm a horrible person who loves to torture my green faves. Sorry, uh, more. Pitch from Voltron. Number three from Cutting Who's Next Door. There's a longer list. Those are just the few I can remember off the top of my head. So I didn't write that list down. Ladybug is trying to figure out how to whip her and even goes to some lucky charm, but Lila stops her, saying if she tries anything funny, she'll dispose of the students one by one. I mean... She wouldn't actually... Because she still has... Because, like, the student saw her get acclimatized. And she still has a crush on Adrian. But Ladybug can't do anything. And surprisingly, it's Chloe who, at this point in my ideal universe, uh, would have gotten over herself. Orders everyone to look away and hide from cover or cover their eyes to protect Ladybug's identity. She pulls Sabrina behind the desk because at this point I imagine they were in the middle of a classroom. Everyone hides. Adrian can't find a hiding spot because he was hoping to transform and help Ladybug, but Lila captures him, saying it's no fun if there's not some sort of audience. She casts an illusion and makes it look like Shad is in pain. Adrian is shocked to see Ladybug immediately go for her earrings and he starts yelling at her not to give in. That's not the real Chad. Don't don't be stupid. Don't give up. If even if that was the real Chad, he wouldn't want her to give up. And he goes on this monologue, but the moment that Chad begs for help, Adrian's words are nothing to Ladybug. She's just left in this like Oh my god, Kitty's gonna die, what do I do, what do I do, and almost rips off her earrings. Adrian manages to incapacitate Lila without the help of powers because plot, uh, and stop her and, by Junction Hawkmoth, from discovering Marinette's identity. Not quick enough to, uh, stop himself <laughs> from seeing it. Suddenly there's a shocked Marinette standing where Ladybug just was, holding earrings in her hands with tears in her eyes, and she's just in shock. Because Lila's illusion was so real, she believed it was Shat for a second. And now, Adrian knows. He knows she's Ladybug and has to, like, convince him not to say anything. But if she says anything, the rest of the class will know that Adrian knows. And while she trusts the class not to say anything or bug him about it, Lila's a different story, and if somebody slips that Adrian knows, Lila might do something. But before she can say anything to tell, tell him to stay quiet, he puts a hand to his lips to signal he won't tell anyone. Later, after everything calms down, he finally, like, he doesn't corner her, but he gets her alone and asks, Hey! Why'd you reveal your identity to save Shat? It's pretty well known that you claim not to have feelings for him. And Marinovich that says straight up, I couldn't bear to see Shat in pain. He is my best friend, and at that moment, his safety was all that mattered. And while she knew Lila wouldn't hurt the rest of the class due to her crush on Adrian, She, as in Lila, probably figured, well, there's no way Shat Noir is in the class. I'm safe hurting him. Especially since no one knew who Shat Noir really was, so only Ladybug would have cared if he was safe. I'd like there to be some line in there where it just clicks in Adrian's mind, like, bong! Holy shit, I'm more in love than I impressively had anticipated, something like that. And then you just hear Marin, and it's probably something like, as annoying as he can be, Shat's still my partner. 
<laughs> do probably do that again for him. He's my kitty, and as his lady, gotta protect him, right? And my shipper heart would love just chef's kiss if this led to Marinette realizing how deeply she cared for Shat. And if it weren't for the fact that they have to keep their civilian identity secret from each other, she'd probably date him. And she's left with this realization that I'm head over here, here, I'm, he sorry, I cannot talk. I am head over heels for my partner. She. I either end the episode with just Adrian having to deal with the aftermath, or next time they saw each other, Ladybug straight up hugging Chat Noir, seeing how happy she is that he's safe and explaining she had a horrible run with Nakuma. She's glad he wasn't there and that what happened wasn't real. And Chat is having an existential crisis. Yeah. Then leave our favorite kitty boy to deal with those feelings and revelations. Because after that, it is not my problem. Could end up another Chat Noir situation? Probably not, though. But I find it funny. Is this evil or nice? It's evil to Shat. Slash Adrian. Not to Marinette and Ladywood, because she doesn't know she's torturing both versions. The rest of this video is unscripted, so I would just... Again, love if this caused... Marinette to treat Chat with more care and stuff, and like hint that she has feelings for him as well, but she can't go through with them because they can't reveal their identities. And just every other episode after stuff like that happens, you just see Adrian dead on the floor. And eventually he, uh, approaches Marinetta about, like, I saw the news, you're flirting with Chat, and she goes, and she's just like, did not realize, holy crap. Uh, and just like, I guess I cared for him more than I ever knew. Even if his puns and jokes are really dumb. And just... Yeah, leave Adrian to have to deal with all that. I mean, it'd be equally funny if Marinette did, but since she's the main character, it wouldn't be as fun. Because if Adrian finds out first, we get to have more Adrian-centric episodes where he's just reeling in the aftermath. Is this evil? I feel like it's evil. Eh, that's enough for me today. Uh, hopefully I have enough drawing to fill this space almost exactly, but if not, enjoy the rest of the speed draw without me going off on this. Comment, subscribe, all that jazz and i will see you in the comments of the next video giving people actually comment bye